Hey everyone, this is Sam from Wargamer Online, and today we've got a pretty awesome little miniature. I've always liked these. They're called Weird Vein Psychers, and they're from the Astra Militarum range. They're actually in the in the new indexes as Astra Telepathica. I can never seem to pronounce it correctly, but today we're going to be going over how to paint the red robes or the crimson robes. And uh, this tutorial will be one based purely on that. The rest of this model was painted up as a premium tutorial on the website, so head on over to there for that. But let's get on with this one. Okay, so to begin with, this model's been primed with Chaos Black, and then it's had a Zenith or highlight of Corax White, so two spray can primers just to give us some pre-shading and some highlighting on those raised areas. We're using a lot of Scale 75 paints here, as well as some Games Workshop, but use whichever are the best for yourself, really. You don't have to go out and get Scale 75 or GW, just use the equivalent colours. So we're starting off with Deep Red. Now this is quite a deep red, which is what we wanted, and we're applying this over all of the robe areas and pretty much all the clothing on this model. It's one giant coat that is wearing, or cloak or cloak or whatever it is, and this needs to be built up in probably three or four thin coats. Especially I found with a scale 75 paint, you need to do much thinner consistency of paint because otherwise it does it gets quite clogged up in no time at all. So getting used to how much you need to thin the paint depending on which brand you're using is definitely something that's worth learning because I've only ever really used Games Workshop in the past so this is a completely new learning experience for myself. So you can see here it's still wet, it's uh, basically apply one full layer to an area and then let it dry completely before I do the second layer but generally because the paint is so thin as I'm working this upper area on this model the, the robes you can see are already dry so I can go back and do another layer on the robes afterwards and that's pretty much all you need to do it takes a bit of patience more than anything because it is quite boring just going around and laboriously just painting layers and layers and building it up but it's definitely better than doing quite a thick coat and um, later on there are times especially on the skin where I just I could have thinned it more and done more layers but I've, I've definitely put it on thicker just to speed up the process so once this is fully dried, we're going to shade all of this red using Karaberg Crimson. This is another Games Workshop paint. And you pretty much want to cover everything with this, but make sure you get it into all of the recesses. Do the wash in one go as well. You don't want to do part of the robe and then stop and then come back and do another bit, because otherwise you'll get nasty watermarks. So you can see I'm working the entire bottom half of his robes and then I'll do the back half of his robes and then I'll do the torso. But just make sure you do it in sections that are complete otherwise you'll get those watermarks the other thing with this you're going to need to wait probably at least 30 minutes to an hour i would say um, probably not an hour depends on how hot it is in your area but at the moment in the uk it is pretty warm so these are pretty much drying within 30 minutes but just make sure it is dry before you do the next step which is going to be building it back up again okay so now that's fully dry we're going to use the original base color we're using deep red and we're going to go over all of the robe again, but this time we're going to leave some of those recesses with the Caribou Crimson. This does take a bit of time building it back up again, but it's definitely worth doing it in these thinner layers, which we did just before. One other thing to note is I'm painting in the direction that the robe is going down in, so I'm starting with my brush at the top of his robes and then dragging it down very gently towards the bottom. And I'm doing them in almost uh, straight lines not always straight sometimes I curve it around just to give it a little bit of texture and you can see I've messed up here so I'm just removing some of the paint because it is quite thin it is easy to remove if you get any mistakes at this stage as well which is another reason why it's worth putting all of your paint on as thin as you can and generally just going around the model here now just putting this extra layer of deep red on make sure you don't go into the recesses because you want that deeper caribou crimson to stay there and then once that's fully done and dried, we're going to go on to the next colour, which is going to be Antares Red, or Antares Red. Now, guess what we're going to do here? <laughs> exactly the same. We're going to do the next highlight. We're going to go over all of the robe, but this time focusing it more on the, the, the raised areas or where the light would hit the robe more than any other area. So I'm kind of going around the edges here, picking out some points where I think the direct sunlight would hit it. And that's pretty much the, the basis for it. The, the paint is thin, you can see it's drying very, very quickly. It's almost like a glaze at this point. And I'm just putting in some color, making it sure, uh, making the highlights a little bit brighter. 
Now, if you wanted to do more of a blend, that's where you would do wet blending on this, or you'd feather it into the uh, darker color. This is supposed to be a quicker paint job, so it is very, it's quite rough, but you can definitely see the highlights between the, the different shades in between the colors and the layers, but that's how I paint. I, I don't really do the very nice wet blending. One day I might do wet blending properly, but um, I've always tended to paint texture into my models. So you can see the brush strokes, you can see them when it's dry. And for me, I actually like that. So paint however suits yourself. But this is just more of a guideline on where to put the paint and what colors I've used, and hopefully they will work for you. The other thing with this is you could literally pick any shade, any color that you wanted. So if you wanted to do a blue or a green or a yellow robe, just pick three or four different shades for that color that you've chosen and follow the same sort of technique that I'm doing here. And you can build up where well, you can choose whatever you want. This is just an example of how it looks in red because this is what Rachel's having in her custodian army. It's a lot of gold and reds. Now again, once this is finally dry, we're going to go on to Alder, I'm going to call this Alder on Red, but it's Alder Baron Red. It's from Scale 75, it's another one, I'm trying these new paints out. This is pretty much the same as we did before, we're going to be going over all of the red that we've done just on the edges and the, the raised highlights where we want it to, to be the brightest, but you still want to leave some of the previous Antares red and you just want to do like the points of this and block in some more texture keep painting in the same direction as you have been doing for the rest of the model so that it doesn't look weird. If you suddenly start going horizontally and things, it won't really look correct. So just kind of follow the same as what you've done in the past. And you can see the different transitions in color here. We're gonna brighten this up with some oranges and some yellows, um, and then we're gonna glaze it with a red as well. And, and that will just give it the vibrancy that we want right at the end and you can stop at any of these points if you decide that two reds and, and an orange is enough just do that you don't need to put as many layers as this or you could do twice as many go for whichever one you prefer so you can see this is this color is really blocking in some of those lines the edges of the robes some of these areas don't even have textures on the model but i'm just putting them on just to make them a little bit more defined and that helps give it a little bit of texture Once this dries as well, the tone goes down a little bit, and then we're going to add a glaze later on, which is going to be the blood letter glaze from Games Workshop. So some of these harsh transitions will blend a little bit better, and that's why we're going to be using oranges and yellows, because once we've blended them with the, the glaze, they won't be as stark as they are right now. Just as a final bit for this highlighting, I'm using the edge of the brush and going along the bottom of the robes. You can see I'm just dragging a line across there to do a final highlight on the bottom of the robe. So that's pretty much that stage done and we're going to go on to the orange now. This is quite a bright contrasting colour so you'll immediately see that it's, it's much higher than the other colours, the other reds that we've used. This is Mars Orange by Scale 75, quite another vibrant colour by themselves. And that's one thing I've noticed with these colours so far, they've got a lot of pigment in them and you can thin them down quite a bit and they still are quite vibrant which is a nice thing to work with. So this one we are pretty much doing an edge highlight on this, we're going around the bottom of the robe, around the folds in the robes and any of the lines that we want to define we'll do a very thin um, brush stroke of that. It looks really really nice. You might want to skip this step, it's completely up to you whether you want it to be quite a high contrast. I definitely prefer it when I'm painting, but I know not everybody does. You can see we're just painting in some of these lines here. I'm just going in the same direction as, as the robes are, like we have been doing from the beginning. And you'll probably want to paint these in batches as well. So this was painted with the other two, which are in the box. So there was three of these done in one go. And that's so that all of these stages of red are done at the same time. Because if you start one model and then later on you decide to do another one, you might not get the colours exactly the same or you might do it a different process. If you're not following videos like this and you don't have it written down, it is always difficult to try and remember what paints you've used and what the process was. So this is quite handy for me doing these videos just so I can go back and see exactly what I did and then I can replicate it on models in the future. So these videos are both for you as a viewer and for myself as reference. We're also going to do the bottom of the robe with its orange as well. Just do a very fine edge highlight using the side of the brush 
and I would always say don't ever try and paint with the point. If you can help it use the edge because you can see how much of a, a nicer line you get by using this and it's a lot easier. Okay the bottom half of the robe has now started to dry so you can see the orange is looking quite nice with that red. You can definitely see the texture in it and um, to be honest you don't necessarily need to do any sort of yellow highlighting after this you could keep it with this orange and red and it would look absolutely fine the next part that I do uh, we're going to do a little wash a little focused wash but when we put the yellow on that's been done because the custodians that this arm this is going with have had a little bit of yellow added to their tassels so I've done the yellow to tie in with the rest of the army so just to add a little bit of contrast just to darken some of these recesses we're going to use druchi violet and we're just almost like a pin wash we're just going to use the same small layer brush that we've had from the beginning and we're just going to paint this Drucci violet into these recesses just to shade them we're not using a red because we're going to use that later on but this is just to give it a little bit of a tonal change and it is only a subtle change as well the rest of this model is going to have gold um, added to it and we're going to use purple as the wash for the gold at different points so that's why we're using the purple on the red as well just to tie in so that overall the model looks very similar and this is still quite thin you can see it drying already some areas you might want to put a, a couple of coats others you might just want to do the one and it will be absolutely fine Okay, we're almost at the end of this now, and we're just going to use Sol Yellow from Scale 75. Now, you could just paint this on the corners as little dots, or you could do a very thin line. You want to make sure that the paint is thin on this part. You don't want to put it on quite thick and chunky, otherwise it will look nasty. So I'm doing this quite sparingly. I'm focusing this on the top parts of all of the robe areas, and just adding little dots here and there. And you can see it is quite rough you could probably blend this into the orange much nicer than this but to speed up the process i'm just putting it on um very willy-nilly it's uh it's not a perfect process and like i was saying this is just to increase the the highlight the contrast is much higher than it was before so you can skip this step if you prefer a more blended look or you can add this in if you want it to really pop when it's on the battlefield now the next step will definitely help with this contrast we're going to use the red blood letter glaze from games workshop and this is quite a thin glaze we're going to apply this over the entire robe and do it all in one coat very similar to a wash except for this is a bit thinner than a wash so you um, apply this very thin layer over everything and you can see the red on it it's um, a lot more vibrant than it was and you can do this multiple times so if you're not happy with the first time it's fully dried and you think oh that could be a little bit red a little bit more red then just do a second coat but make sure to let the first one completely dry before you go on to the second one otherwise you'll disturb the surface and you'll get some nasty watermarks and you'll get some lines and things that you don't really like unless you paint painting Nurgle that doesn't really doesn't really look good on a model The other option is, as well, instead of using blood letter from Games Workshop, you can create your own glazes. So if you get any normal paint, a red of some sort, you can thin it down with water or you can use medium and thin it down to a very uh, thin consistency and apply it over the top of this exactly in the same way as we're doing right now. And that way you can play around with different shades of glazes. You're not limited to what's available from the shops. You can create your own. So there will be videos on YouTube or everywhere you know there's plenty of places on the internet explaining how to create your own glazers so i definitely recommend looking into that one day i may do one for wargamer online but for now we're just going to use blood letter because it's easy and you can see how nice this looks so that's the end of this tutorial it's a fairly quick one i say fairly quick it's been a long one actually painting some crimson robes but hopefully it will help even if you're not painting this miniature you could use this process on any other model that you want to paint there is a full tutorial on wargameronline.com on how I painted the rest of this miniature so you can see how the leather, there's two different shades of brown which have been done, there's gold, there's silvers, there's purity seals, there's the little uh, wax part of the purity seal as well as the face that the uh, lovely Primaris Psyker or Weird Vein Psyker is showing off right now. So uh, head on over to the website
right for that if you want to see the, the full tutorial, which will be a much longer video, but have a lot more included. But um, thank you very much for watching this. If you enjoyed the video, please press like. And if you have not subscribed already, please press the subscribe button. It would be very much appreciated. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.